continuing where we left off, let's press play and see what happens. Okay, so we see that our animation is looping, but of course the ball and the animation have nothing to do with one another. They're two independent things happening. Okay, well actually we don't want this animation to loop. So go and find your animation. This is where it, it's helpful to be organized. Okay, and there is my ring glow animation. You can also find it by typing ring glow right here. All right, ring glow, and then we're gonna click off loop time. All right, then let's see what happens. If we press play, it only played once. It didn't play again. When we made the Ring Glow animation, it made an animation controller for us called Ring. The animation controller helps us switch between the different animations that we can have on our game objects. The animation controller you can look at in this animator window. So if you don't have it, go to Window, Animation, Animator. So the animation is a timeline and the animator is a flow graph. Press play and look at the animator window and you'll see the flow go from entry to our animation and then it stops. We don't want anything to happen until the ball triggers the animation on the ring. So we're gonna have to tell it to do nothing. Right click, create state, and create an empty state. And then on entry, let's make nothing happen so set the default, right click on this entry and set default state to this new state. And I'm gonna click left click on that and call it empty. All right, there's no animation in this. I just wanted to make that clear and it's default. So the default is orange. So what we're going to need to do is a script on the ring where the ring listens for the ball and when the ball hits it, it plays this animation. So it triggers to ring glow, and then when it's done, it goes back to empty to not do anything. On this ring, we want to add a box collider. So just type in, uh, select the ring, and then press add component, and select box collider. Then we can see here our box collider. Now, if we play, what we're going to see is that the ball doesn't go through the ring, which is not what we want. We want a collider here, but what we want it to be is we want it to be a trigger because we want to trigger this animation. So let's press play and we see that it falls through, but we don't have an animation triggering. That's because we're going to need to give some directions here to our ring for that animation to play. and. Just like last time, I have a script for us to use. So click on Add Component, go to New Script, and type in Ring Glow. Now I already have the script here, so I'm gonna bring it in, and then I want you to copy it. If you named your animation something differently, Right here at anim.play, you need to put the name of your animation there, because if it isn't Ring Glow, exactly as I have it here, with a capitalization of R and G, it's not going to work. So you might need to check and see what the name of your animation is. On the Ring Glow script, what we're going to need is we're going to need the animator, this thing right here. So just go ahead and drag that in there. Good. So press play and let's see what happens. Great. So what happened was we had a ball go through, hit the trigger on this box collider on the ring, and it played the animation, but then it didn't play it for the uh, subsequent balls. So what we're going to need to do is so go to your animator window here right click on this ring glow do make transition back to empty 
Because once it plays the animation, we're triggering it to play this animation, then it's going to go back to empty and it's going to sit there until the ring glow animation is triggered again. Cool. That's exactly what we want. After this animation goes back to empty and then the animation is called again, the animation is triggered again uh, by our balls hitting the collider. Awesome. So what you can do from here is just have fun, like duplicate the ring, Press you can press control D and then holding control, you can make it a fixed unit there. So it goes from 1075 to 975. And that's just exactly what I did. I, I pressed control D and, and brought it down. So let's, let's do that again. Awesome. So I'll go ahead and I'll hold shift and left click. So I, I left click here, hold shift, left click again, press control D. And then with those selected, holding control, I drag down on the Y axis, and then I'm gonna do that one more time. Uh, so left click this, hold shift, left click the bottom one, press control D, and then hold control, and then bring that down with a, a left click drag. All right, then let's pl uh, press play. And awesome. What's missing from the video you saw in the beginning of this series is that mine had a really cool glow to it. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm using something called post processing stack. So go to the asset store, There's, the window should be there, and import this free post-processing stack. Okay, I've already done it. So then what you do is on your camera here, uh, once it's in imported, add a post-processing behavior script and then in a camera folder uh, or just anywhere in your assets, I have a camera folder here, right click and do uh, create post-processing profile. Mine is called camera effects. If you double click on that, you'll see an option called bloom. I mean, there's a lot of things in here. Uh, so go back to your camera and in that post-processing behavior, just drag that profile that you have and then enable Bloom. And what you'll see is that glow will be nicely uh, glowy. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Um, there's some other things here. A vignette is really nice. Um, there's motion blur. Just click on stuff and see what it does. Uh, that's what this sandbox kind of approach is all about here. Also, don't expect yourself to get everything from the last couple of videos. It's gonna take going through it a few times for you to feel familiar and uh, ultimately master it. In any case, next, we're going to render out a video of our animation and then convert it to a GIF.